Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight, in grade five, in module six, in lesson number five, we are working on investigating patterns in vertical and horizontal lines, and we are interpreting points on the plane as distances from the axes. So let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework. Now, the first thing I want to say is when there are these big multi-part questions. Um, this makes it a little more difficult because I, if I do all of the problem, then you of course have no, no challenges left for you and that's not what I want. But if I only do part of the problem, then I can only answer sort of how we can do certain things. So I'm gonna kind of split the difference here. I'm gonna try to do parts, specifically 1A, 1B, and 1C of this problem. And I'm gonna do a little bit less on problem number two and we'll see if you guys can handle it from there. So let's take a look at problem number one. We're gonna use the coordinate plane to answer these questions. Number Part A, use a straight edge to construct a line that goes through points A and B, label that line G. So let's see, we have to create a line that goes through A and B, and we have to label it line G. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my line tool for a second. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make my line, then I have to make and move my line. So I'm gonna make it, and then I'm gonna move my line. There we go, I think that's about right. Oop, now I'm noticing. Yeah, that would be better. It goes right through those lines. I'm going to give it um, some arrowheads there on the end. And Oh, I'm supposed to label it, uh, label the line G. And I'm using that scripted G, right? So that's G, line G. Awesome. Let's see. So that's 1A. How about 1B? Line G is parallel to which axis? Well, let's see. Line G runs this way. What axis also runs that way? Oh, this, the x-axis, right? In fact, they didn't even label it. I'm going to Go ahead and label it for them. This is the x-axis, and up here is the y-axis. So it looks to me like this line G is parallel to this, the x-axis. And it's, let's see, and is perpendicular to, let's see, so this line, where which axis does it meet and form right angles? Oh, the y-axis, right? It looks like it meets and it forms these two right angles right there. So it looks like it's perpendicular to the y-axis. Awesome. Now the last question we're supposed to answer and, um, that I'm going to help you with in one is, is part C. Draw two or two more points on line G. Name them C and D. Oh, two more points along this line. Huh. So I guess we can put them just anywhere. So let's see. I'm going to put one point right here. I'm going to call that point C. And maybe one way out here. I'm going to call that point D. So that's two, let me see if I did that right. Draw two more points on line G. Yep, both of those points are on line G. And we're naming them C and D. Yep, this one's named C, and this one's named D. Now, I'm noticing that you're gonna have to then go ahead and give the coordinates for each of those points, A and B, that were already created. C and D, you can put them where I put them, or you can put them in other places along line G. In that case, you'll have different coordinates than I'll have for mine. And then you're gonna have to answer E and F below. So I'll get you about halfway through this problem. Let's take a, look, take a look at one more. Problem two, I'm only do, gonna do a little bit on problem two. Let's read the directions. Plot the following points on the coordinate plane to the right. And then I'm gonna do two of those points for you. Point H. Point H is at three-fourths along the x-axis and three on the y-axis. Hmm. Let's see, three-fourths on the x-axis. So here's our x-axis. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and label it x-axis just to remind me, and this one is a y-axis. So let's see, three fourths and then three. So three fourths, I'm looking, it looks like each of these blocks must be one fourth. So that's one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Oh, there we go. So it's three fourths. And then how high do we go? Let's see, we go three units up. One, two, three units up. So that's three fourths out on the on the x-axis and three units up on the y-axis. I'm gonna go ahead and put my dot there in red. And let's see, oh, that's point H, got it. And let's see, point I, so point I, oh, three-fourths, again, so it's three-fourths out, and then how high, how high up the y-axis? Two and one-fourth, okay, so we're three-fourths, and then we went one, two, and one-fourth, so it looks like it'd be right there, so I'm gonna do that one in blue. Two, oops. Two and one fourth, and that's point I. Awesome. And now I'm noticing that 
uh, my instruction in part A is I'm gonna I've I've not yet done J or K, but my instruction in part A is use a straight edge to draw a line to connect these points, and I already have these two points in a row, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my black marker, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my line tool, and I'm gonna create a line that goes right through those points. See, go back and forth a little bit. It's a little off. Oh, there we go. Awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and get, put little arrows on that to indicate it's a line. And now it's gone through at least my points H and I. And I have a feeling if they had us draw that line that it's going to go through points K and J as well. But I'm going to let you guys figure that out as well as the other problems in B, C, and D as part of part two. So I got you about halfway through the first problem and about a quarter of the way through the second problem. That leaves plenty of challenges for you. I'll see you next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems. Take care. Bye-bye.